There is at least a million who are illegally here. You're saying you will try to deport them all? Yes, I am. It will be a massive step up from anything that any prior government has done in the past. Just to clarify, Nigel Farage is wrong when he says it is a practical impossibility. Yes, he is. With all due respect, retire Nigel Farage. What is it about Elon Musk that concerns you? Is it right that Lucy Connolly and Julie Sweeney are in prison for an ex? and Facebook post respectively. I want to ensure that, that politicians like myself give voice so that the silent majority do not feel that they're being ignored and that will only breed more discontent, more disturbances in our country. What about the death of Peter Lynch in custody? I'm worried that we are sliding into the position where there is censorship. Tommy Robinson is locked up for 18 months. Is he not becoming a political prisoner? Robert Jenrick, thank you so much for being on Outspoken today. It is a critical week, of course, in your campaign against Kemi Badenoch. Well, Dan, thank you very much for having me on. I want to start with mass deportations because Nigel Farage has said that they are a political and practical impossibility. Why do you disagree with him? And how will you ensure, Robert, that there are mass deportations of for example, foreign criminals in British jails? Well, look, I think we've got to take action on this. We have 10,000 foreign criminals in our prisons today, making it difficult for us to lock up dangerous people who we want to get off the streets and keep the public safe. We don't know precisely how many people are in this country illegally, but survey after survey suggests it's a very large number. It's over a million people in all likelihood. So we've got to take action. When I was the immigration minister for a year, I increased the numbers being deported by 70 percent. But that's not enough. We need to go further than that in order to get those people out of our country who've broken the law and to disincentivize more people from coming. I've said we should use all the levers of the British state to do this. Why are we giving foreign aid to countries, frankly, that are not taking back their own citizens, even those who are in our prisons and we need to get back to their home countries? Why are we giving visas to countries who are not taking us seriously? We need to ensure that the UK is stepping up, not being treated like mugs. Let's get these people out of our prisons, off our streets, back home, and secure our borders once totally. and for all. But there's a million. There is at least a million who are illegally here. You're saying you will try to deport them all? Yes, I am. I don't Excellent. pretend it's going to be plain sailing. It will be a massive step up from anything that any prior government has done in the past. But I don't think that the alternative is tenable, that we have hundreds of thousands of people in our country who have no right to be here, who have broken the law of the land. That is wrong. So we should be ensuring that a new Home Office with the proper resources that it requires and using every lever that we have as a country to tackle this once and for all. And so Nigel is wrong, just to clarify, Nigel Farage is wrong when he says it is a practical and political impossibility. Yes, he is. Look, okay. we haven't done this before. I worked hard to increase the numbers being removed with some success. But we need to step up our game to an altogether higher level. And to achieve this, we have to leave the European Convention on Human Rights because it's the ECHR which time and again prevents us from taking the action that we need. Let me give you an example. You know, a Ugandan man just the other day who clubbed somebody to death in the back of an ambulance in North London was prevented from leaving this country, being deported back to Uganda because of the ECHR, where it cited Article 3. Instead, that man is now in our prisons, costing taxpayers millions of pounds, taking the place of somebody else who should be locked up to keep the public safe. You know, there was a Somali terrorist who did copycat bombings on the tube in London, could have killed hundreds of people, was locked up, later released. We tried to remove him back home to Somalia. Because of the ECHR, he has now been prevented. He is literally walking the streets of our country. That is not right. We've got to take action. If we can leave the European Convention on Human Rights, replace it with a British Bill of Rights, we can get on and do this, secure our borders, get those people off our streets, keep the British public safe once again. Absolutely. This is music to my ears. But the challenge you've got, Robert, is you have to get people like me 
And a lot of my audience, we are longtime Tory supporters who, shock horror, voted for reform at the last election. You have to get us back, Robert, and you have to get us to trust you again. Now, some of your colleagues have recently told the I newspaper that you're going to tack back to the centre after being elected in a very similar way uh, to, for example, Keir Starmer after his leadership election. So can you give your word, Robert, a solemn vow, not to me, but to the outspoken family watching now, that you believe everything that you're saying, especially about mass deportations, and that as prime minister, you will deliver what you're saying? Yes, Dan, I do. Look, I understand the anger and the frustration of millions of people in our country. I share it myself. It's ultimately why I chose to resign from the cabinet at the end of last mm -hmm. year. I was the only person to resign from cabinet in the whole of the last five years. Yes, and, and kudos I did it after for you doing that. And I did it, Dan, after fighting relentlessly to reduce the numbers coming into our country legally by 300,000 a year. But it wasn't enough. I did it after fighting for a stronger version of the Rwanda bill. And then I left the cabinet in order to go it back into parliament on the back benches and work with 60 Conservative colleagues to try to change the law to ensure that the ECHR couldn't prevent us from getting those flights off to Rwanda, getting those people out of our country. If you look at the people who are backing me to be leader of our party, people like Lord David Frost, our former chief Brexit negotiator, people like Great man. Bill Cash, who's whole careers fighting for parliamentary sovereignty, whether it's on Brexit or now on our borders to stop illegal migration. These people are supporting me, backing me, because they have faith in me. They think they can trust me to fix this problem, to do as I say. And I'm not prepared to be just another politician who makes and breaks promises. And that's one of the things I want to ensure this leadership contest settles, that we as a party begin to get back those voters who left us to reform by having very clear and unambiguous promises, not platitudes, not rhetoric, but saying we will cap legal migration in the tens of thousands, make it the law of the land this time, that we leave the European Convention on Human Rights so that we can finally secure our borders. So Dan, if there are Conservative Party members listening to your show, and I know not everybody is, I would urge them, use your vote in the remaining hours of this contest to ensure we have a leader who has conviction on this issue, who has clear policies and is determined to change the Conservative Party to get these things done. Now on Nigel, one of the issues I think, Robert, for us is that you're talking very tough. You're saying you want to retire him. But Robert, we really like you, but we also really like Nigel. And surely there's a reality here. You're going to have to do, as Conservative Party leader, a deal or an electoral pact of some form with Reform UK to win in 2029. So why not acknowledge that now? Why are you being so tough talking about wanting to retire, Nigel? Well, look, I respect Nigel Farage. He and I agree on many things. But he is the leader of a different political party, one which is intent on destroying the Conservative Party. I don't think he wants to join the Conservative Party. What I want to do is lead the Conservative Party in a way which brings back those voters that we lost, restores the trust and the confidence of the millions of small C Conservatives who we have lost in recent years. I think you do that by having a leader that has a track record on these issues, who has some credibility and authenticity, but also by having very clear and unambiguous policies on those principal issues. And the other things, frankly, the reform voters okay. care about, like strong defences, yes. where we need to be spending more on our armed forces by taking that money from our international aid budget so we can get the defence budget back into this, back to the level that it needs okay. to be. In and the thing is, we have world. first I think pass you, the you post, know, right? Yeah, but we have first pass the post. So what if the British public voted Reform UK the biggest party but required a Conservative coalition deal to govern, would you consider that? And would you serve in a cabinet with Nigel Farage as Prime Minister, for example? No, look, I, I want to, with all due respect, retire Nigel Farage, get back those voters we've lost, get back the Conservative Party into power. That's what we need as a country right now. We need to take the fight to Labour, ultimately win the next general election. If I was leader of this party, I would hope that the millions 
of people who left us to reform can have confidence in us once again, that we're under new management, that we believe in these things, we get it, we understand the anger and frustration, legitimate anger and frustration that people feel across this country, and that we're going to be different next okay. time. What, what about the Nigel Farage's Home Secretary then, with you as Prime Minister? No, look, you're, you're attempting me, Dan. But what I want to do is make sure the Conservative Party is back in contention. And there's okay. a simple choice, really, for okay. members who are yet to vote okay. in this leadership election. You, you, do know... you want someone who has that credibility, who has clear and unambiguous mm -hmm. positions on these issues, or a vague promise of a plan tomorrow. I always think that clear, unambiguous policies now are much more valuable. So I urge your viewers okay. to vote for me, ensure the party can move forward and begin this long road of winning back the trust and confidence of the people that we've lost. Uh, Robert, you know my other big issue is free speech, which is under absolute dire threat internationally. So I was quite surprised uh, to read in The Spectator that you said you're not a big fan of Elon Musk. And I was really confused about that because I've obviously loved your campaign. I've agreed with most of what, you, what you've said. But Elon Musk won my poll of the top freedom fighters in the world. I think this guy, I mean, there he is with Rishi Sunak. I think this guy is arguably the most important man in the world. So what is it about Elon Musk that concerns you? Look, I, 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 don't, I haven't said I have concerns. I think he's done a good job since uh, taking over on X. What I, what I want us to do is be very robust in defending freedom of speech, which I think is in danger in this country mm -hmm. as across the West. And we need to make sure that we are holding Labour to account. You know, they just scrapped the freedom of speech bill in Parliament. Big mistake. We need to ensure that we are not over-regulating the internet. I opposed the idea of legal but harmful content. You know, there shouldn't be uh, laws that prevent you from saying things online which you couldn't say on the streets. That is very important to me. And I'll certainly be doing everything I can if I'm leader of this party to defend freedom of speech here and abroad. But first, we've been told our whole lives that wrinkle creams were the easiest way to look younger. Now one doctor says that's nothing but old news. According to Dr. John Lake, the world-renowned Beverly Hills beauty expert, most wrinkle fixes on the market are nothing but glorified moisturizers. He says they hardly make a dent on your appearance, and some can even be harmful to your skin. Recently, Dr. Lake has focused his attention away from mainstream cosmetic practices. Why? So that he can pursue a revolutionary anti-aging breakthrough, one that some experts say could empty the wallets of the cosmetic industry. He says it's almost like Photoshop for your face. You may even be mad after seeing how easy it is to visibly erase wrinkles from view. His personal clients have dubbed his new do-it-yourself technique the Age Rewinder Method because it can take years or even decades off your appearance in under two minutes. So in light of this amazing breakthrough, Dr. Lake has released a step-by-step -step video to the public, free and uninterrupted, where he outlines exactly how to use this simple solution from home. If this helps even one person look younger or feel more confident, I'll be thrilled knowing I helped, Dr. Lake told reporters. The video has since gone viral. At first, it was shared by users on Facebook, but since then, it's racked up over 2.3 million views and counting. So far, the comments and feedback have been outstanding, with thousands of women reporting they look decades younger. One viewer even commented, Best results of anything I've used. I can't believe how well this works. I'll never stop using this. I don't understand how it works, but the results are great. Thank you. So you can find out more about this yourself right now. Go to bhmd1.com forward slash outspoken, or you can just clip on the link in the description box below. Let me repeat bhmd1 the number one dot com forward slash outspoken now there is one thing dr lake asks from his viewers if watching this video helps you look and feel younger than you have in years then please share this video with your friends and loved ones together we have the power to help as many women reclaim a youthful look as possible so go watch the video at bhmd1.com forward slash outspoken right now or just click on the link in the description box below. But now, back to the show.
Do, do we need a First Amendment? Well, one of the things I have said, Dan, is that if we leave the European Convention on Human Rights and draft our own British Bill of Rights, this is a big opportunity for us Conservatives to protect the, the freedoms and liberties of British people in a new way. And I want to work with great jurists and lawyers like Lord Jonathan Sumption to mm, draft that. Right, man. And I think it could improve freedom of speech because there are rights in this country which are undoubtedly in danger, like private property rights, freedom of religion freedom of speech. And if we have the opportunity now to draft a British Bill of Rights, why not protect and enhance those freedoms and liberties? And I would start with freedom of speech. Um, is it right that Lucy Connolly and Julie Sweeney, a housewife uh, who is married to a conservative politician and a grandmother, are in prison for an ex and Facebook post respectively, when we know there are paedophiles and women beaters who haven't served a day in jail? Well, look, I, I don't know enough, in honesty, about the specific case to, to comment on whether or not their sentences were correct. But obviously, I want to ensure that we are locking up uh, those serious offenders, like sexual offenders like the, the sorts that you you mentioned and that's why i want to get building more prisons i want to have uh, hyper prolific offenders behind bars i want to ensure we're taking a tougher approach on policing i'm very worried about creeping two-tier policing on our streets right mm -hmm. now where the police seem to be more intent on uh, community relations or so-called community leaders than they are about enforcing the law without fear or favor that is my priority what about the death of peter lynch in custody. Now, this is a man who was locked up after the Southport massacre, so-called riots. He wasn't responsible, Robert, for any violence himself. He called the police scum. Uh, he certainly used some hurty words, but he was sentenced to two years and eight months. And according to the Daily Telegraph, took his own life behind no. bars. Obviously, Sky, uh, uh, Sly News had reported that Muslim gangs were intending to target so-called rioters behind bars. Are, are you concerned about the death of Peter Lynch? Yeah, yes, I am. Of course, I'm concerned about what's happened in that case. And look, I, I want the criminal justice system and our politicians, frankly, to be taking a much more even-handed approach. I don't want people to be uh, calling out incidents you know, squeamishly or selectively, as we saw earlier in the summer. In fact, I want the media to be able to speak about these things much more openly than they are today. I'm worried that we are sliding into the position that we see in some other European countries like Germany, where there is censorship either by regulation or self-censorship and serious crimes that are being committed, for example, by uh, illegal migrants on the streets are not being covered properly out of fear for community tensions and uh, community cohesion issues. That, that is wrong. Totally. And we need to be ensuring that our media are calling out what is happening. No veil of secrecy being drawn over what's happening on our own streets. That is letting the British public down. Tommy Robinson was sentenced to 18 months in prison yesterday, Robert. Now, this is because he broadcast the film Silenced. It's a very controversial movie. Obviously, uh, there was a judge's order not to broadcast the film. However, if we had a First Amendment, which I believe we should, he would be able to broadcast this journalism. And then if someone wanted to sue him for it successfully, uh, they could do so. Is it really right that Tommy Robinson is locked up for 18 months? And is he not verging now on a political, becoming a political prisoner? Well, I'm not going to comment on the specific case of, of Tommy Robinson, but the broader point you make is an important one. What we need to ensure is that freedom of speech is properly protected in our country. So we're going to address these issues and have a national debate about how we can protect and preserve freedom of speech in this country. There are obviously millions of people who are deeply concerned about mass migration, about rising illegal migration and about the challenges of integration community cohesion that come with them and i want to ensure that politicians like myself give voice to those people so the silent majority do not feel as they do today that they're being ignored and that will only breed more discontent 
more disturbances in our country in the years ahead. Okay, so so you're saying you understand, for example, why some of those people may have chosen to peacefully protest in London over the weekend? Yes, I, I do. I mean, of course, you, you we will never condone any violence or fuckery no, if indeed no. there was. And there wasn't any. There wasn't any at the weekend. But, but I agree, but, I'm opposed to all violence, and certainly all violence against the police. But it's incredibly important that people have the right to protest and that we fight creeping two-tier policing because that's something I'm deeply worried about. And I know there are millions of people across the country who feel those concerns as well. And they should have the right to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to articulate those concerns. And I certainly will as leader of the Conservative Party. Finally, Robert, two particular bugbears of mine. Uh, will you defund the BBC and will you finally sell off Channel 4? Uh, well, look, I, I am worried about bias in our media. And you see that repeatedly on the BBC and indeed Channel 4. I worry about the lack of diversity of opinion that you see on much of our mainstream media. And we need to be tackling that. If these are going to continue to be so-called public service broadcasters, then they need to be ensuring that they are representing the whole country, not just a narrow stream of metropolitan opinion. Indeed. Well, look, it's a big week for you. Good luck on Saturday. I think you are the man the Conservative Party needs. Well, Dan, thank you very much indeed. And I would urge your viewers to get out and vote because the Conservative Party needs to change. It's got to listen to the public, win back those people who are deeply sceptical of us right now. And you do that with courage and substance, clear policies to tackle the issues that people are understandably concerned about. And I want to do that if I'm lucky enough to take the party forward from Saturday. Robert Jenrick, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast so you can listen to the show every weekday on the go wherever you are.